Hello guys, welcome to my channel Power BI with Rush. Today we're going to learn about mQuery. What is mQuery? Everyone's talking about it. Everyone says it's a very powerful language that Power Query Editor somehow uses in the background. So what is it? So I just went to the Google and just went to the Microsoft website and you see all the information blah 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 and so complex. It's like learning a new programming language and if you are not a technical you don't have any technical background and this might seem very overwhelming uh, I found it overwhelming when I first learned mQuery but I got through it so what I thought was like you know what I'm going to create a video series for mQuery and everyone's going to learn mQuery in a very simple way I wanna, I'm gonna explain it very in a very simple way without any complex words like expression values variable and blah 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 like I'm not gonna jump into all of the information all at once what I want what I'll do is I'll just explain what the benef what's the benefit of mQuery in a simple language that everyone will all beginners especially will be able to understand it so what is mQuery so mQuery is basically um, let me just give you a overview right so high level overview so you you must have used DAX right uh, whenever you're creating a measure or calculated column uh, on your report, you use, you use DAX, the expressions, the like switch functions or selected value function or sum or average or everything that uses DAX. So you can use DAX uh, on the report level, which is the report level. You can use DAX and transform your data and do this and that, create sum, get um, get average or mean or whatever. Everything you can do on DAX right so mQuery is similar to that but mQuery is used in Power Query instead which is the Power Query editor when you hit transform like when you go transform the Power Query editor opens up so this is where the mQuery is used and uh, where is it used so you can select any data set and just go advanced editor and there it is that's your mQuery now if you look at this it seems very complex but what the mQuery is basically doing is it's connecting to the source right it's loading the data and whatever the transformation steps you've done like change this location column to text injury column to text and stuff like that that's been happening uh, in the background so mQuery is the language that's enabling all those changes so for example if I go over here injury type I want to change this to a text text value so you select data type is equal to text and there you go that's change type 1 that's your step and if I go to the advanced editor and there's change type 1 and it says the injury type column is now changed to text so that's what the mQuery is doing so that's how Power Query Editor works and it's the basic it's the background, the backbone of the Power Query engine, which is very powerful engine that Power BI uses, as well as Excel. And if you uh, are familiar with uh, SQL Server Analysis Services tabular model, that's where the Power Query editor is used as well. And now in the SQL Server Integration Service, which is SSIS, that's there's a new um, data flow connector called Power Query Editor as well, as well where you can connect the data source with Power Query Editor, transform and everything and push it to uh, a new destination destination um, location. So that's, that's how Power Query is used. So let me just show you a quick basic example of how, why, like, you know, I want to show you why we might want to learn uh, Power Query. Uh, sorry M query so let me go just quickly create a blank query so this is just a basic you don't need to learn anything I'm just showing you an example so sometimes what happens is when you have a huge data set what do you want to sometimes sometimes like once in a while you want to filter the data set for today's date right so how how do how do I get today's date in pump query so just there's a function date time to look on and you get the time as well see but you don't need time no one needs time you just you just need date right so you just go date from the date time and go yep that's your date for today and let me just rename that to today today okay so that's how you get um, date today's date in mQuery so you can use this query in uh, any of your table uh, like 
you can go um, so normally what you do is go to any table and go to your date column and go date filters and between and then you go select uh, okay from 1st of May to uh, 13th of May that's how you do it but now you can just put the today that we created the query that we created here that one and you can just put it there and it's going to show you uh, every sales value that's less than um, or equal to today's date and you can just put it another number because it's not showing any data it seems there's no data since May 1st so there you go from 2022 1st of January till today's date there are uh, there were these many records these many cells right so that's how you can do it so every time that now every time the data refreshes uh, it's gonna show you the data that's less than today's date or you can go um, like another example you don't want today's date because it's it's uh, it doesn't make sense because every time the data set refreshes it's gonna show you the latest data set right but what do you want you don't want um, this month's uh, you don't want this month's data like you don't you, you don't want uh, you want uh, anything before this month right so what I'm saying is before start of this month that's what you want then you go here and that's your uh, start of the month value and you can go over here again and now you want uh, less than today so what's going is it's, it's giving us date time so I, I again need to convert it to date value instead of date time value and uh, yep that's your date value and now you go to sales and now it's going to show you anything less than uh, this month so it's going to show you data until previous month which is April today this month's May so anything before uh, this month so that's now every time now say one month from now you in June and you're gonna see everything every all the data uh, before June which is uh, until May so it's gonna be a dynamic you don't need to any do anything you can just leave it like this and you, you don't need to do anything right that's pretty cool that's that's you can use uh, this sort of thing in so many areas you must be thinking oh that's pretty cool uh, you can we can use it in so many ways right another I'll just give you another example let's go yearly average that's where we have like average sales uh, for a year so for 2020 we had an average uh, of this many sales and similar to that 2021 and 2022 so what your boss wants to do get is like get all the data that's um, so let me just rename this get the total total sales total sales is basically all the sales over the years the average of all sales so that would be average of these three so you can go over here and just go um, list uh, the average and go to that yearly average take that column or uh, whatever the column is which is I'm guessing the average is the name of the column and that, there you go that's your uh, total average since 2020 I guess 2020 21 22 that's your uh, total average in three years and you can you don't want all those extra decimal values decimal points what you want to do is round up to two decimal points and just go number the round and two decimal points and there you go that's your um, average yearly and now what you want to do is you want to go to the cells um, you I've already put the date filter what I want to do is I want to put another filter up so I want to uh, the sales I want to show this I want the sales that's less than the value that we just had so I think that was 13 50, 50, 55 so we can see the sell items that are performing below average value right so total sales average was 1586 sorry so that was that would be 1586 so that's how you would do it right 1586 but tomorrow so say we have an early average for 2023 as well but and it's going to change every day so every average is every going to it's going to change every day so you don't want to go over here change the average and go change the average so you can go now just put total sales here right total sales and go and this is going to be dynamic so every day your ch sales is going to change it, and tomorrow it might be 1600 the day after tomorrow it might be 1700 and so on. so every time you want to 
go over you want to see um, all your sale items that's uh, below the average sales you go you, it's going to change it's going to be dynamic so this is how you can use mquery uh, and this is just a basic uh, beginner tutorial uh, beginner sorry introduction video and I didn't want to make it uh, complex so in the next video I'm going to start a basic step-by-step uh, -step tutorials that will help you learn mquery very well and trust me I'm gonna use a very simple language I'm not gonna make it very overwhelming and uh, please do subscribe to my channel and follow my videos like my videos and give me your comments if there's anything any help you need uh, I'm very active uh, in Power BI community as well so even on YouTube if you need help with anything any problems just let me know and I'll uh, come up with a I'll try to come up with a solution and uh, anything related to mquery power bi or dax and please yep yeah, like share and subscribe this is that is it for today uh, thank you have a good one